Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby with another powerful point to ponder. Yesterday, I talked about the grasshopper complex. I want to talk about another complex that God helps us overcome, and that's the Messiah complex. That is trying to play God. Please know this, that the office of God does not have a vacancy. You are not God. Job chapter 14, verse 5 says this. Our time is limited. You have given us so many months to live and have set limits we can not go beyond. Now, this is talking about us as humans. It's not talking about God because there's no limits to what God can do. That's what makes God God. There's a book in the Bible called the book of Lamentations, but there's no book in the Bible called the book of Limitations because God is a God without limits. But it says of you and I, our time is limited. You have given us only so many months to live and have set limits. We can not go beyond. Everything has limits and there's a limit to what you can do and there's a limit to what I can do. So since there's limits on us, we can't be everything to all people. We are not God. And whenever you're trying to play God and solve the world's problems, well, brothers and sisters, you have a Messiah complex. God wants us to overcome the Messiah complex because there are limits. Even Jesus had to say no sometimes. He, he said no. He did not do what everything everyone wanted him to do. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 38 and 39, it says this. Then some teachers of the law and some Pharisees spoke up. Teachers, they said, we want to see you perform a miracle. And there are times when people want to see you perform a miracle to do some. I mean, like you're God. And listen to what Jesus says, how evil and godless are the people of this day? Jesus exclaims, you ask for a miracle. And then what does Jesus say? No, I'm not going to do it. Now, if Jesus had to say no, because uh, maybe in, there were some other things he needed to get done and he didn't want to to uh, do things just for the Pharisees pleasure. Uh, if Jesus had to do that, what about you and what about me? He's the Messiah. And he said, no, you're not the Messiah. I'm not the Messiah. And we say yes to everybody because we have this Messiah complex. Let me give you some areas in which we often have the Messiah complex. Many of us are what I want to call Messiah pleasers. You, you live to just please people. You want everyone to like you because when you say no, somebody's going to get upset with you. But you only have so much time. God, Job said, remember in Job chapter 14, verse five, that there are limits there are limits. One, our time is limited. Uh, we only have so many months to live. We, God sets limits and we cannot go beyond it. So quit being a people pleaser, Messiah pleasers, Messiah rescuers. The Messiah rescuer is the person who thinks that every time somebody's in trouble, guess who has to rescue them? And you're always the one that has to rescue someone. You got to please everybody, rescue somebody. Then you're the Messiah givers. Anytime somebody's broke and needs their car to be to, to, to be fixed or they got to pay a, a utility bill. Guess who they come to? They come to you because you're the Messiah pleaser. You're the Messiah rescue. You're the Messiah giver. And yet, when, every time they have a trouble, they'll ca call you at two o'clock in the morning looking for counseling. And now here you are, the Messiah pleaser, the Messiah rescue, the Messiah giver, now the Messiah counselor, and you sit down there and help people walk through their problems. And now, because there's protests erupting everywhere, you've got Messiah crusaders and Messiah uh, protesters in which you're expected to always be on the front line of every protest there is. Listen, there is limited time. And if you're so busy giving all of your time, being the pleaser, being the rescuer, being the giver, being the counselor, being the protector, being everybody's teacher, being the crusader, when are you going to have time for you? Or more importantly, listen to me, when are you going to have time for your kids? I know a whole lot of crusaders who are out on the streets and they, we should be on the streets. We should be protesting. But there has to be balance. you got a son who maybe needs you too. you got a daughter who maybe needs you as well. And if you're giving all of your time to one thing and no time 
to your kids, or even to your own health. Eating, resting, reviving, exercising. Then you're, you're not any good for anyone else if you're not first good for yourself. Now let me help you people who have the Messiah complex get over it with two lies and two lessons. Here's the two lies. Lie number one, everyone else's needs should take priority over my own. The devil is a liar. Love your neighbor as yourself. You cannot love your neighbor if you first don't love yourself. Everyone's needs are not supposed to take priority over you. That's not being selfish. That's being what Yvette Carnell calls you know, on BreakingBrown.com. She calls it being self-interested. And you can't be self, you can't be helpful to anyone else if you're not first self-interested. So lie number one is everyone else's needs takes priority over mine. Lie number two, if I don't do it, it won't get done. Okay, die. Just die. If you die, see if it won't get done. Let me tell you, if you take a, take a bucket of water, stick your fist in the water, and pull it out. And that symbolizes what happens when you die. Just like when you put your fist in the water, the water separates a little bit. When you pull it out, guess what? It comes right back together. And that's what's going to happen when you die. And the same folk who you rescuing and teaching and giving to and counseling and protecting, when you die, they're going to say, well, you know, they, they should have took a break. I don't, you know, I wouldn't have done all that kind of stuff. So those are the two lies. Lie number one is everyone else's t needs take priority over yours. Lie number two, if you don't do it, it won't get done. Now, here's the lesson. Here's the two lessons. If you want to be productive, you got to cut back. Can't do everything. And you don't have to apologize for that. John chapter 15 verses 1 through and 2 says, I am the real vine. My father is the gardener. He breaks off every branch in me that does not bear fruit. And he prunes every branch that does not bear fruit. So it will be clean and bear more fruit. The key word is the word prune. You know what that means? The word prune means cut back. I have a minister, a pastor friend of mine who's a part of our church, and, and it's uh, Dr. Claude Royston. And Dr. Claude Royston has uh, rose bushes, and he tells me that every now and then he'll cut back on some good roses. He'll cut back on some stuff that are good. And people will look at him and say, why are you cutting back on those good roses? Cutting them back. He's pruning it. In other words, he pushes back because he wants to get these good, these roses opportunity to even grow even more beautiful roses. So we have to cut back in order to be productive. And sometimes we have to cut back because in order to be productive. That's the lesson we should learn. And then here's the other lesson. The lesson is this. Do less, trust more. Do less and trust God more. When you've done all you can, you've reached your limit. And say, God, I've reached my limit. I've done all I can do. Here it is, God. I'm giving it to you. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to watch something on Netflix. I am not going to worry about it. I've reached my limits. I'm giving it back to you. And you know what I've discovered? I discovered that God can do more in 20 minutes than I can do in 20 years if I would do less and trust more. You know, We've had, uh, if you go back to Job chapter 14, verse 5, when it says that there are limits. We've had, as in many cities, we've had protests in our streets. And, and this movement for justice that is erupting in our streets is the greatest grassroots groundswell of justice protest in the history of America, including the civil rights struggle. And that's because this generation has something they didn't have in the civil rights struggle, social media, and they're being educated uh, through YouTube. So it's going to be sustained. But as the pastor of St. Stephen Baptist Church, which is, a, which is an influential church here in our city, and as the president of an HBCU here in our city, there were some people who were 
asking the question, well, where is Kevin Cosby? Where is Kevin Cosby? And I started feeling guilty because I was not out on the streets like some others were. And um, I was about to go out there and I said, but you know what, if I go out there, some things that I have to do in terms of the college won't get done or some other things that I have to do that is a part of the struggle but ne not necessarily a part of the struggle that's on the streets. So guess what I decided to do? I recognized that I had limits and I gave myself to um, the, our media and getting the word out through media and podcasts. I gave myself to working behind the scenes in order to help push for reparations. Uh, I gave myself behind the scenes by making videos and I gave myself behind the scenes to helping to strengthen the only historically black college in the history of America that has made a comeback, comeback in the Simmons College of Kentucky. And then after I get through preparing sermons, and after I get through doing and preparing for six days, powerful points to ponder, and after I get through counseling members, and after I get through with uh, Simmons College of Kentucky, I realize, you know what? I have reached my limit. And God sets limits that no one can go beyond. And hear me. Don't you let anyone tell you what those limits are to be because they are not going to let you tell them what the limits are. Your body will tell you what your limits are. About two weeks ago, and you didn't know this had happened, I had preached, I was up all night, I had studied, I always have some types of anxiety anytime I preach on a Sunday morning. And, and I, this is happening for 41 years, I have some, some real anxiety. And um, I, was, I couldn't go to sleep, and I'd been working all week, and I'd been studying, getting the powerful points to ponder. And it was two weeks ago, and I was doing a powerful point to ponder. And as I was doing it, I said, you know what? I have to stop. And those who helped me, um, like Angela Lucier and Tyler Anderson, I did something I had never done before. I said, I can't do it anymore. I'm stopped. I literally hit a wall about two weeks ago. And I just sat down on my sofa here in my office. And I laid down. And I didn't get up for two hours because I, I had literally hit a wall and I had reached my limits. And my body had told me, you have reached your limits. And guess what? There will be times when your body will tell you, I have reached my limits. I have been everybody's Messiah and I've reached my limit. When you've reached your limit, I don't care if people are talking about you on Facebook. I don't care if people don't speak to you. I don't care if people don't like you. I don't care what folks say about you. You are not God. Let me read the scripture one more time. Our time is limited. You have, you have given us only so many months to live and have set limits we cannot go beyond. If you think you are the Messiah, please resign immediately because the throne of heaven is not vacant. You trust more and try less because God can do more in 10 minutes than you can do in 10 years. I don't know who needs to hear this, but I think there's somebody who's hearing this word right now and saying, thank you, Kevin Cosby, because I needed this. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we resign as the Messiah. Get this word in your heart. Help us to do what we can to the best of our ability and then try less and trust you more. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for spending some meaningful moments with the Master as we've unlocked God's Word. And as we say every day, stay safe 
Get the word in you and stay sane. And if you can, during COVID-19, stay home. God bless you. See you tomorrow.